Hi, okay, so we're gonna try this again, third time's a charm. We're I'm gonna show you how to make the acrylic keychain that has the name inside the um, larger portion of it. Sorry, it's getting late and I have done this a couple of times now. And hopefully this one will take. So we're gonna choose our this is an Inkscape. We're gonna choose our text tool and make a box and type in the name that we want to use and then <clears throat> we need to choose the font so I've said I want um, I looked through my fonts and I chose always in my heart which is a script font that I like just a basic script font I'm gonna make it just a little bit longer and I'm gonna make actually the size of it be about two inches I'm gonna zoom in a bit and then we're going to make three copies of it. So there's three of them. So we're going to copy it twice. And we're going to take one of them and we're going to go path. We're going to make an outset. So we're going to do this a couple of times, however many you decide that you want. I usually do about three of them. And then um, now we've got this blob here. So we, this is going to be our outside path. I'm going to change the color of it to um, something cheery and bright, and I can, um, if I hit, sh if I hold down shift and I choose my color, that's my outline. If I just click on a color, that's my inside. And you guys can all see the email coming in from my husband. And. Um, so we're going to actually not have any fill on the inside, but we have a cut path going around on the outside. And if I choose my node tool here, we can see that this is a vectorized cut path because it will highlight red so the Glowforge can read it. These are just still text boxes, so if you load it in, the Glowforge won't be able to recognize it. We actually don't want this bubble that's on the inside, so I'm going to switch over to outline mode, grab my node tool here, zoom in just a bit more, and grab these and delete them. So now we actually have the full outside shape. We're going to grab our name, stick it in there, I'm going to center it, and uh, we're in outline mode, so this is still just the text. We need to turn it into a vector, so we're going to go path object path. Now it's been vectored. And you'll see though that because it's script, it's got these overlapping um, portions in their letters. So the machine is going to read it as either off or on. So this is on, flips to off, so it's not going to engrave anything, and then it flips back to on. And this is also going to be on. This is going to be at off. So these are going to be two blobs. So we need to weld those together. So we're going to go up to path, Combine, path, union. So there's now it's all one and it has been turned into a vector. It's got lots of nodes. If I hover over it, it turns red, which means the Glowforge is going to be able to read where its start and stop points are going to be for its engraving. If we flip back to our display mode view, there's our normal mode. So we've got what we're going to engrave and we've got what we're going to cut on the outside. Now you need to decide if you're going to have your uh, keychain attachment circle be on the inside of the keychain or if you're going to put a loop or some other kind of form on the outside of it. So we can create a circle. If you hold control down while you're doing your circle, you'll see it's it keeps it as a circle. Whereas if you don't, you can do uh, whatever kind of ellipse that you want to. So we've got our perfect circle. Um, I know for making that other keychain and for majoring my little uh, ring, my jump ring that's attaching to the chain of the keychain, that I want at about 0.1 to be my size for my inner ring. So I can take this and I can put it on the inside or I can attach it to the outside. So if I did that 
to put it in the inside, then I'm going to actually take this and move it out just a little bit. And I'm going to bring this in. And now we have it on the inside. I'm going to use my ruler tool to check and see what the distance between here and here is because we want to make sure that there's enough room for the metal to circle our jump ring to go around this part of the keychain and to also attach to the chain that we're using. And that is enough because I've used my tool to measure what it is. So there we have a very basic um, keychain cutout. The Glowforge is going to measure it in, um, not measure, it's going to cut and engrave in the order that you are setting your colors at. So it's always going to engrave first, and then it's always going to go to its cuts next. We want to cut from the inside out. So this inner circle, we need to, we should change to a different color. So I'm going to choose dark green, shift and green instead of just clicking on it because we don't want to fill it. We just want to have our outline. The reason that I say we want to go from the inside out is because if you let the Glowforge choose where it's going to cut, sometimes it's going to cut the outside first and then it's going to do the inside. And so if you have any discrepancy in your height or there's um, the material can drop down in the bed, then this whole thing will drop down before it cuts this, which will change your focus height and so it won't cut in the spot that you want it. So we want it to cut the inside circle first before it goes through and does the outside cut. So if we did, um, if we wanted another one, or if we wanted it to be a little bit different, then I can draw a bigger circle here and um, position it wherever I'm gonna decide I want it to be and I grab my littler circle and I'll put it in here and I'll grab both of them and I'll center it. And I held shift down while I did that so I click and then I shift down and I click and um, did that together. So there's my two pieces together and then I can take this circle and this outside shape and I can weld them together by put, doing a union. So now I have my keychain with a little bit of a, a hangy hole loop on it and it still has my inner cut. If this is for acrylic um, and I want it to be so that it is smooth on the top so wherever you know you're reading it left to right um, for English characters and so it's going to be smooth on top so I want the engrave on the back then I need to mirror it, so I'm going to group everything together. So I grabbed everything, and then I, or I grouped it, and then I'm just going to mirror it over here in the button. So I'm going to engrave it backwards, basically. So when it is engraving, it's going to engrave all of this that's black, and then it's going to go through and cut it out. But then you pull it out, and you peel off all the masking tape, and you flip it over, and then you've got your nice engrave going the right direction. Um, on the back and um, it's nice and smooth on the front. So the reason I have this extra one that's hanging up here is because in the future if I ever want to come back to this file again then I have it and it is still in a text format. I can't edit this text. I can't go through and be like oh I don't want it to be Dave. I want it to be Sarah. It won't let me because it's already got all of its nodes. It's been vectorized. Don't you just love that word? I'm not even sure it's a real one. So um, this is what's going to allow me to create multiple versions of different uh, keychains. It's already in the font. It's going to remember it so I can refer back. And um, so if we wanted to do another one, so we would just duplicate it, control D, pull it over, double click, Type in the name that you want to do, duplicate it so that you've got extra because I always save as a backup in case I want to um, go back and do it. So my third one here, we're going to go path, oops, we're going to go path, outset, path, outset for the first time, second time and a third 
third time. So there is my name for Sarah. If I flip over, actually let's go ahead and um, change it to our colors that I want. And if I flip over to view mode into outline mode, I'll zoom in just a little bit. We've got this still hanging out right here. So let's grab our node tool and get rid of it from the inside. Move this down, grab all of it, center, center, and there we have Sarah. We're going to grab Sarah. That is our engraved version. And we're going to turn it into a vector, so object to path. We need to weld it together. Combine union. There we go. And so there is our cursive name on the inside of another name. So there's a couple of little funny bumps here. You can choose to go in and, um, you know, maybe you don't want it to look quite so bumpy. You can level it out. You can use different node tools, um, do different things with your nodes. So it doesn't have to be so the way it is. You can just change it. So again, here's our name, and I'm going to stick a little circle on the inside. So I want to move this out just a bit. I'm going to take in the edges. I just need to make some room. I need a circle that's about 0.1. And put my circle here on the inside. Check my measurement, make sure that there's enough room. There is. And there's another keychain. So let's flip back over to normal. We want to change the color of this so that it comes before. So any all the colors on the left will come first, and then as you go in order, they'll they'll go sequentially. Um, this is a color palette that Glowforge recognizes. It's one thing that you can actually program into your computer or into your Inkscape. There's lots of different choices. I've got a much bigger palette too for when I do need to do a huge uh, color step process. And then just make sure that you save your file and you're good to go.